another pioneer ancestor we have is Mary Eliza Packer. Uh, she is the daughter of Nathan William Packer. She was born in Nauvoo. And Mary Eliza Packer uh, came across on the, with the exodus <coughs> of the pioneers, and she married uh, Grandpa William Davis. Now this is Grandpa uh, Kenneth Balls. Many of you will remember Kenneth Balls. Uh, Grandma Davis was his mother's parents. I, just, uh, I don't remember all the names, but uh, anyway, this uh, Mary Eliza Packer Davis was Grandpa Balls' grandmother. She was born in Nauvoo, and she is buried in Soda Springs with the Davis family up there. Now, uh, we talk about the sesquicentennial and... Well, Boyd K. Packer is also a descendant of Nathan William Packer. So I don't know the, uh, I can't answer that question beyond that. Soon Nathan William Packer, Nathan, or uh, Boyd K. Packer has spoken at the Nathan William Packer family meetings before. Pam and I, our only fame to uh, connection, or claim to connection with the, those meetings is we once went and babysat while they all had their meetings. We entertained kids all day long out in the, in the park. We didn't get to go to any of those meetings. But anyway, uh, someday we'll gather all these histories in. Um, I just want to take this opportunity to express uh, appreciation to mom and dad who are our uh, uh, common ancestors here in this room and are the heads of this family. Their names are printed first on the t-shirt that we all have. And, uh, mom and dad are pioneers in many ways. Uh, they were both raised in the church but they've raised their family in the church. And, uh, they started their life together in uh, Pocatello, where Dad worked for uh, the Pocatello Housing Authority. And then an opportunity came in, uh, I think it was 1950 or 51, that they built the Monsanto plant in Soda Springs. And as the plant was built, and they began uh, staffing the plant, uh, Grandpa Balls, Grandpa Fred Balls, had the opportunity to go to work there as an accountant which he did, and Uncle Ken was just a little baby when we moved, and I wasn't much older. I was maybe uh, as old as Cameron, or just a little older, maybe as old as Jessica. I was three years old when we moved, and we moved from uh, Pocatello to Soda Springs in, in Great Grandpa Balls' old red truck. He had a red grain truck, and I remember uh, loading our things into that wagon, and putting the canvas tarp over it and uh, so we moved by covered motorized wagon or truck into uh, Soda Springs and lived for a while in the old Eastman house which was owned by Uncle Milton Horsley but it was a home I think had probably been built by Mr. Eastman when he established the drugstore the Eastman Drugs in Soda Springs which was the uh, lar well I don't know all the claim to fame of Eastman Drugs but we lived in this old uh, Eastman house and it had a wood stove in the kitchen and that's where grandma used to cook on that wood stove and it was cold in the winter and uh, my dad grandpa balls had a long cord with a light bulb on the end and he put that light bulb out underneath the uh, hood of our old Ford car and leave it on all night to try and keep the frost off the engine so in the morning he could start the car and go to work I know in the winter time when we lived in the old Eastman house, mom and dad would close up the back rooms of the house and, and move our beds into the living room. We slept in the front room and uh, then we had the kitchen in the front room and a little bathroom there. And it was uh, kind of an interesting experience and then we, um, Uncle Ken was just a little baby so he probably doesn't remember too much of this. We moved up to the house in Soda Springs where Grandma lives now, and that was built on the corner 
of a big alfalfa field. And when we were little kids, we used to go up and play in the alfalfa field. Uncle Ken will remember that. Probably Uncle Mark, too, playing in the alfalfa field growing up. But I just want to express uh, appreciation to uh, Grandma, our mother. Uh, this year marks 50 years since she and Dad were married. Uh, they would have celebrated their 50th anniversary on June 30th. And so as part of this family reunion, I think we should take some time. I think Uncle Mark has arranged for us to do it, to take Grandma out to dinner, just celebrate uh, 50 years of, of uh, her life in the Ball family. Because prior to that, she was in the Sorensen family. And I want to also, while we're thinking about our ancestors, and, and I think we should ask Grandma to tell us some more about Grandpa uh, Sorensen, Martin Ezra Sorensen, who was a very uh, successful farmer in Central Valley of Caribou County. He established a large farm, which was later uh, divided among uh, two of his uh, sons-in-law. And Grandma Balls has part of that farm still, 160 acres of that farm. Um, Grandpa Balls, or excuse me, Grandpa Sorensen was called as a fairly young man to uh, be state president, in which position he served for how many years? Mom? 17, 17 years as state president of the uh, Bannock State. That was uh, before they called it the, the Grace Idaho State. It used to be called the Bannock State. And of course, Grandpa Balls, uh, who Uncle Ken is named after, uh, Kenneth G. Balls, was the uh, patriot. He was a bishop in Soda Springs for two different times, I think, totally in about 15 years. And then he was called to be the patriarch and served as patriarch for years. So we have a great. Uh, heritage in the church. I've uh, often wished that my dad could be with us. I know that he would be proud of, of his family. He loved his family very much and, and sacrificed in many ways for his family. He's a wonderful, kind man. He could be strict, but when he was strict, he was also full of love. And he was strict only because he knew that what he wanted us young whippersnap boys to do was, was the right thing. And so he was uh, just a wonderful man. And I enjoyed many experiences with Grandpa Balls. When I was a little boy, I remember going fishing out at Tin Cup Creek. He was so intent on fishing that he didn't even bother, didn't even let the mosquitoes bother him. And I looked at him and the mosquitoes just landed on his face. It was like he had a beard of mosquitoes. They were all over his face on both sides of it. Don't those mosquitoes bother you? And he says, oh, they'll go away. He just continued to fish. I thought, that's a pretty patient man. So that's uh, kind of a background, Mark. I, uh, I just think it'd be wonderful if we each had an opportunity, or those that want to, to maybe share some feelings they may have. I know uh, I, I'd like to take this opportunity and I've never done this. Publicly apologize to Uncle Ken for how rough I was on him when he was a little kid. <laughs> he, uh, I was the big brother and he was next. And Grandma Sorsen used to say, someday he's going to be bigger than you and you better watch out. Well, he's bigger than me, but he's never gotten even. And I appreciate that. <laughs> I, uh, <clears throat> I really love my uh, brothers and my sisters too. But Uncle Ken took a little abuse at my hand and I have just apologized to you. Well, there we are at the Washington, D.C. Temple. And there's the temple. Beautiful. We just went to a session and did baptisms and sitting over at the visitor center.